saints, we got about got about a minute, guys, a minute, and we're gonna roll forward. I know, I know, it's the holiday, Juneteenth, and I pray that you all have had a great holiday. Um, those that did not have to work, uh, enjoy yourself. Maybe even at a cookout right now. So, um, just want to take a small portion of your time, and if not. You go ahead and enjoy yourself. Come back and enjoy the message at a later date, later time. But if you're here with us, we're going to make sure we give you solid word this day that you will be able to carry yourself to do the things that God has called you to do. Yes, yes, yes. God has laid this thing out for us via the word of God. So tap a friend on the shoulder, a loved one. Let them know um, that guy, he's back on the, on the YouTube or back on the Facebook getting ready to talk to you guys about the things of God. Got about 30 seconds, guys, and this train is pulling out the station. Okay. Let me remove. Okay, let me remove the church so we'll find out who is at church and who's at a cookout. <laughs> Just enjoy you guys, really. Um, take time, guys. You're here for the word of God. Focus in, lock in, and let's find out what it is that God has to say to us, for us, for our benefit in the Word of God. Let's find out. I want you to focus in and find out what is it that God is saying to you. That's how we're doing, guys. We're constantly here to make the Word live, to make the Bible live, to make the um, things of God live. We're not serving a dead God, but a living one, which we touched on a bit last week. So, with that said, let's roll before the throne of grace in prayer. And then move forward in studying of the word of God, if you will. Father, we thank you. We bless you and we honor you for this day, this time that we have in your word. I pray, Father, that you bless us, that we have this mindset, Lord, of serving you in all that we do. Lord, I pray that we bring our mind in with everything that has been done or everything that is going on. Let us stay focused, Lord, on the moment. Help us to stay in the word, Lord, that we may hear what you have to say to us, for us, about us, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that the nuggets that we have in thy word, that it will not slip away. So with that said, right now, by my own free will, Lord, I give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney over the message right now. Lord, let him take this message in any way he see fit for the benefit and the purpose of making sure that thy people have everything they need for their spiritual growth. It is you, Lord, that has prepared the meal. It is you, Lord, that have put in all of the nutrients that are needed for the healthy growth of a spiritual, Lord God, believer. My job is just to serve that, Lord, which you have already prepared. Help me, Lord, in no way, form, or fashion to touch, Lord, your recipe. It is yours. You tailor-made it, Lord, for thy people. So, Lord, that we may take the word of God and preach it to the people of God. Lord, with that said, I pray that you keep the people's minds in the moment, that they will not be distracted by the things of the enemy, that he may try to pull their minds away from what you're trying to so valuably get to them. To those that are here with us right now, help us to stay focused, ready to receive your word, Lord God, and take it and write it down and keep it in our hearts. So those that will be joining us shortly, protect them, Lord, that they may be able to get to a safe place, undistracted, where they may be able to hear your word and apply your word to their lives. And to those that will not be here with us, for whatever reason, I plead the blood of Jesus that you bless them, Lord, that they are able to study your message at a later date, Lord, to find out exactly what is it that you have in it for them. Lord, we thank you, we bless you, and we honor you, Lord God. We give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney over the message. Let him bind every demonic spirit that raises up against us with the purpose of trying to bring confusion, doubt, or division in the word of God. Help us that we may grow in through and by your word. Now, for doing this, Lord, we'll carefully give thy name the praise, for this is a prayer that we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father, for it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior, for you are Jesus. You are the Christ. If you agree with that prayer, saints, you say amen. And so, again, I say happy holidays to so many, and I know that some of your schedules, um, schedules has been altered or changed. And um, with that said, you know, we just want to, for me, I am one, and I thank God for this mindset that God has given me. I'm not one at all that preached to a number. I preach to a person. If it's one person there with a heart to, to, to hear, I would be just as passionate and have just a heart to preach to that person. If it's important to you to be there, I'm going to make sure the word of God get to you in every way, form, or fashion. I'm just not one of those people that are triggered by numbers. And, and of course, everyone would love to have, um, to turn out to be able to proclaim the word of God. But I keep it simple. 
I keep it simple for the uh, purpose of loving the Lord and giving God's best to whosoever will. Whosoever is willing, I'm willing to give God's best to them for them about God's word. Now, with that said and done, let us get ready to move forward. Give me, give me a moment here. Let me play with this for a moment. Okay. Let us move forward in the word of God. There we go. Okay. Uh, forward in the word of God for the purpose of learning. Now, what we studied last, guys, we're in Acts and we're coming down. We're going to end in uh, 20, uh, fifth chapter, Acts the 25th chapter. And today, the Lord's will, we'll be going into Acts the 26th chapter, but carrying on the conversation that we're having now. And so we last left off, guys, last week in Acts the uh, 25th. 25th chapter, verse number 18. We cover it down from 18 to 24, and we will go back and read that, address that, and then we'll move forward with new information. You all, you all know by now our popular slingshot effect, which is, let's go back, get that information, and then spring forward to new things, okay? So in Acts, the 25th chapter, in verse number 18 is what we were, it says, and it's studying about Paul and this trial that he is in, and what it is that uh, all of the controversy about Paul. So it says here, uh, uh, against whom when the accuser stood up, and this is Festus um, speaking with King Agrippa, talking about um, the Jewish people coming after Paul and trying, well, the, the religious leaders coming after Paul and trying to have him arrested and murdered. He says, against whom when the accusers um, stood up, they brought non-accusation of such things I had supposed, but had but had certain questions against him of their own superstitions and of one Jesus, which was dead, whom Paul affirmed to be alive. And because I doubted of such matters of questions, I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem and there be judged of these matters. But when Paul had appealed to be reserved until the hearing of Augustus, I commanded him to be kept till I might send him to Caesar. Says then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the man myself. Tomorrow, he said, thou shalt hear him. And on tomorrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice, in great pomp, and was entered into the place of hearing, and the chief captain and principal men and principal men of the city, at Festus' command, Paul was brought forth. And Festus said, King Agrippa, and all men which are here present with us, ye see this man about whom all the multitude of the Jews have, have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. And so that's what we had left off for, um, left all about. And something I just read I, I captured my attention. I did not see this. Listen at um Agrippa's response in verse number, verse number 19. Superstition of Paul. Um, yeah, and this is that verse number 19. This is King Agrippa speaking. He says, but had certain questions against him of their own superstition and of one Jesus, which, which was dead which was dead, whom Paul affirmed is alive. So just looking at that real quickly, look at the wording, which was dead. So Agrippa, he said, which was dead. It could be interpreted, he's saying, well, this Jesus is dead, or he could have said, which was. And that is to say that Agrippa, was Agrippa a believer? Was Agrippa a believer that one is, um, that Jesus is alive? Because was is a past tense word. Was is to say, well, okay, he's no longer dead. Paul is, that's what Paul is saying. Jesus is no longer dead. He's alive. And so this is what that was taking place in the argument. And so what had happened was Festus was trying to figure this thing out. But Festus did not know how to really deal with this. And that's why he was saying right here in verse number, uh, verse number, verse number 20. He said, because I doubt of such matters, man, I did not know how to, I don't know how to deal with this. Festus was a uh, was a Jew. These are Roman. I mean, say was a Roman. These are Jewish matters. And so Festus is saying, I I I don't know. I, since I, I'm doubting myself, I don't know if this is right or wrong. I asked him whether he would go to Jerusalem and there be just of these matters. Well, go to the people that know this. He's saying, but Paul said, no, I'm not doing that because Paul knew that the gig was up, guys. And and one thing we learned last week is we were just saying, you speak the truth. 
You speak the truth because the truth is going to stay the truth regardless, no matter what is going on, no matter what, um, if you have to speak it today, tomorrow, next week, next month, if you spoke the truth, the truth is just going to be the truth. That's just what it is. So we was telling you, always speak the truth. Let them that come up with the lies try to figure out a way. Because when you tell a lie, you got to remember what lie you told. Because if you told one lie, you, you are adamant about this, and then you are speaking, somebody is listening intently to that what you say. And so if they're listening to you, and you was adamant about this this week, and this next week is something else, and it wasn't what you said, I can look at you and say, now you're lying. And if you're lying about this, the question would be, in the case of a court of law, they would say, well, well, okay, are you lying now or were you lying then? Either way around, it's a gotcha question. One way, you're lying. You cannot say two diametrically opposed things and say you're telling the truth. Something is wrong. And so that's what we learned. You have to speak the truth regardless. And then it says, um, again, uh, just a little noise says, and actually uh, still... I'm looking for okay, the question I asked last week was, are you still looking for Jesus? Or have you missed him? We explained to you last, last week the difference between Jesus on the cross and Jesus coming out of the tomb. See, to a lot of people, that Jesus is still on the cross, meaning he's dead to them. He's not making any changes in your life. See, when Jesus died, he died on the cross, but when he rose, he had the power now to forgive sin. He has the power now legally because there's a rightful way that God had to do things in order to come into humanity. Jesus just cannot appear on the scene to save humanity. He had to go through the birth canal. He had to go through the life of humans so he can then be able to say in all points was I tempted like you without sin. See, because we would have then been able to have an excuse. The devil could have had an excuse if Jesus had not came, and if Jesus did not was not born of a virgin, if Jesus did not live amongst us, if Jesus did not conduct himself in a human form, we had an excuse. Say, well, Lord, you really don't know what it was or how it is to deal with the devil on the ground that it was. Well, now we are without excuse. So the question I ask to each and every last one of you, is Jesus still on the cross, or is the boulder rolled, rolled away where he can come out of the tomb and then make a change in your life? Do you talk about this living Jesus that can't change you, but you asking him to change the world? You are the world, Jesus saying, meaning you are in the world. And how you change the world is being in this world, but not of this world. But the world see that you are alive. But if you're doing the same thing, saying the same thing, acting the same way that the world act, then what is the evidence that Jesus can change things? We say that Jesus is a may a, a, a way maker. But let me ask you, have he ever made a way for you? We say he's a burden bearer. Have he ever burned a baron for you? A problem solver. What has been so complex that he had to solve it for you? A mind regulator. Have your mind been so jacked up that God had to straighten it up? See, we say he de are these things, but yet we don't want to mess up mind. Depression is a real thing. And sometimes Jesus has to get into the midst of the depression to regulate that mind of a person. Sometimes, guys, the burden is on you so heavy. We don't want the burden, but how then can we say Jesus is a burden bearer unless we have a burden that we can't bear? A mind regulator. So my... Okay. Okay, so a mind... Okay, mind regulator. So the things that I'm saying, these are the things that we say, guys, over and over and over again. These are the things that we say um, as believers. But if we never allow Jesus to be that thing to us, then how then can we say that thing is right or true? And the last thing we are touched on, guys, it says, now, um, and that's the last I was asking, is Jesus, is he still on the cross or have he came out of the tomb? Which is it with you? When people look at your life, would they say Jesus is on the cross or would they say Jesus has rose again? And when Jesus has rose, he has the power to raise the dead. He has the power to change your life. You say, well, he raised the dead while he was, um, before he went to the cross. Yeah, but on the cross is where he died. And so what we have to do is deal with that matter. So um, the question is, are you still looking for Jesus or have you missed him? So now we move, guys, to new information as we're going forward with new information. So we're starting, guys, in verse number 25. And so now all this thing, if Festus was trying to get an understanding of all of this, so he had, um, when King Agrippa came, and when King Agrippa came with this whole situation, he wanted to explain to him exactly what was going on, and we'll find out why later on. It says, 
But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death and that he himself had, uh, had appealed to Augustus, I, had, I have demanded to send him. So what he is saying is, Festus is telling King Agrippa, I have looked into this matter closely. Now I'm limited in what I know. This is a Jewish custom. I am a Roman. I have been assigned to this province. This kind of stuff has been these, um, if you will, these issues or what they have, these belief system have been here before I was ever even born. These are customs of the people here. I don't know. So when I listen to what they're saying from a Roman's perspective, I find no wrong with the man and what he has done. And that's what he means. It says, but when I but when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, they was talking about killing him. Festus was saying this man didn't even really committed nothing to be in jail or, or be incarcerated. Y'all were talking about killing him. That would be equivalent to you um, playing with your kid and you throw um, a plastic football or a, one of those Nerf footballs, the spongy footballs, and you hit somebody's car and they want to put, send you to the um, um, to the gallows. We're going to cut off your head because you hit somebody's car with a, a, a spongy football. Overkill? So the thing we're saying is, no, nobody's going to do it. And that's what Festus is saying right here. I examined this thing and I found no reason that this man should be put to death. But my job is, again, we learned one thing, guys. Roman, the job of the Romans were what? The, if you had a province that you was overlooking for Rome, there's only two things Rome wanted. One, they wanted peace. Two, they wanted the taxes. So that's all they're asking for. And so Festus is saying, oh, man, look, this is crazy right here, and I don't know how to deal with this. So he's talking to King Agrippa, and he's asking King Agrippa, saying this whole situation, let's look at it. And so it says, um, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord, whereof, where it says, wherefore I have brought him forth before you, and especially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after, examina after examination had, I may have something to write. So do you see what is taking place here? King Agrippa is Jewish, so he know the Jewish customs and laws. And so what, what Festus is saying, again, he says, of whom I have no... Um, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord. So what he's saying is, right now, how am I going to send this man to Caesar? And I don't even know what to write. Well, Caesar say, okay, he's before me. What is he charged with? Don't know. What has he done? Don't know. No one's going to do that. And so Festus is saying, I can't send this man to King Agrippa. I mean, so I can't send him to Caesar and have no accusation. This man would think I'm loony. He would think I'm unfit to run this province that I am in. So, King Agrippa, I'm coming to you and I'm asking you, my friend. He said, I'm asking you, okay, what do you do with this situation? So, again, that's what he's pointing to. He says, of whom, he says, uh, he says, of whom I have no certain thing to write to my Lord. That is Festus saying, I don't have nothing concrete or nothing really to send to Caesar. He says, wherefore, I have brought him forth before you. And especially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination had, I may have somewhat to write. So he's saying, okay, I'm bringing him, King Agrippa, and I'm really leaning on you right now, that after you listen to his case, maybe there's some Jewish custom or law that I'm not aware of that's causing all this uproar, and you then can fill me in on it, where I may be able to say, okay, um, Caesar, here is what the situation is. Here is the problem that this man... Quote, this Roman citizen is causing. That is the situation he is saying. I want to make sure that in this situation, I will, um, I'm saying he's speaking to him to say that. So that's the question that I'm asking, um, that he's saying right here. Uh, King Agrippa, you're more expert at this. And that, let me say this. You should never be ashamed to ask somebody that may know a little more than you. Understand something. All you know is not all there is to know. See, God has given you two ears and one mouth. You should listen twice as much as you talk. Why? Because one thing you know, you know what you know. But you don't know what you don't know. So if somebody is talking and they're giving information, you should listen intently. That's how you learn things. 
you will sit down and listen. So don't be afraid if it's something you don't know, especially something of this magnitude. So you're finding right here, Agrippa, that's the mark of a good leader. A good leader is not a weak person because they ask someone else that may know a little more than them. You think because you're a supervisor or you're the CEO or you're the owner of the company, you think you know everything? No, you don't know everything. You think because you are a pastor or you've been in church a while, you know everything? No, you do not know everything, saints. None of us do. So you should have no problem as, as um, Festus is doing here. He's asking someone that may be more in the know of the situation. So Agrippa is more um, aware of the customs and laws of the Jewish people. So Festus is deferring to Agrippa. Well, can you tell me something that I'm missing here? that I may be able to deal with this issue. And so there's the, how you bring that from yesterday to the day in your life. You should never have a problem asking. The word says you have not because you ask not. You need to ask a question. If you don't know some things, dig in. But some people, are, sometimes we have this arrogance or haughtiness, and God does not like that, guys. That's one thing that, that, that God would attack every single time, that's pride. The word says a haughty spirit, that's a puffed up spirit, goes before destruction and pride before a fall. When you find a prideful person, you can go ahead and mark the failure that's going to happen to them. Or they're going to fall. You see the people that are arrogant. You can't tell them nothing. When you point out something that they wrong, they got to go find five things that you don't done wrong. That still doesn't change the fact that what you just said or done was wrong. You got to be willing to say, okay, I hear that. Yeah, I was wrong. I was wrong. But many times in pride, when you bring a thing to a person, they're like, yeah, you're right. I was wrong. But so they'll be like, yeah, I understand. Now, you didn't take responsibility for that which you did or say it. So that's what you're looking at right here. Um, Festus is saying, I want to defer to you, King Agrippa. Help me out here because I got to send it up to my upper. Uh, I got to send it up the chain for me. Because one, is a very peculiar situation that we're dealing with. We're dealing with Jewish customs and laws, but we're dealing with a Roman citizen. And I got to take this big ball of confusion and make some sense out of it before I send it to my boss. And that's what is taking place right there. So I want you, especially King Agrippa, to listen to this situation that I may have something to write to my boss. He says, for it seems to me to be unreasonable to send a prisoner and not with not with all a uh, signify the crime laid against him. So I don't know what's the, what is the crime? That's what he's saying. It seems unreasonable to me. Don't do that. That I send, the, um, send him without specifying what the crime is. And that's what Festus Festus is saying. I need to say what is brought against him. Listen. There is, re there is a reason that our laws are set up. Our laws are set up to say, you, we have to know what it is that you are accusing me of. If, if you are accused of something and they won't tell you what you're accused of, then you cannot make a defense for that which you are accused of. And if you are one that do that if you are one that do that well then that's unlawful and there is a redundancy system or um, checks and balances in our system in America that if this court don't do it well this court back here catches it and if this court don't catch us it then the supreme court of the land will catch it and it's not about um, not about what you have done is about what the law says. A good lawyer can argue a lot of stuff, but even the best lawyer can't argue an accusation against you that nobody knows what the accusation is because that can be a million different things. I mean, that's like me telling you, you're going to lose your life if you don't tell me what color, um, or color I'm thinking about in my head. What? what? What are you talking about? See, it depends on if I want you captured or not, if I want you dead or not. Because if you say, well, you're thinking red, and I want you to live, I'm like, oh, you hit it on the head. But if I'm thinking red and you say red, I said, no, I wasn't even thinking of no red. You got to die. So that you can't do that. You can't do that. At least you should be able to give the person an ultimatum. Is it a red or blue? At least I got a 50-50 chance, or either you write it down on a piece of paper. 
And that way, when you say, okay, it's red. Well, let me see the paper. You say it ain't it. And you show me the paper, it's not red. Okay. But when you say in my mind, I'm thinking of a color, you tell me if it's yes or no. It's always going to be what I want it to be. That's a God complex. And so this is what he's telling me. He said, I cannot send this man and saying he is, he is um, they're arresting him for a crime. And there's no crime. I'm going to be in a world of trouble. That's what um, Festus is saying. It's going to look crazy on me. Okay. And so that's what was taking place there. All this is going on with the trial with Paul. And that is what is taking place. So now we move into chapter 26. And it's a carry on from chapter 25. Okay. And so this is what he's saying. So this is what he, um, Festus has just told Agrippa. Man, I got to get an understanding of something that I got to send to Caesar. Because it's not going to fly me sending a man saying he's condemned and then he's not there. And he says, then Agrippa said, then Agrippa said unto to Paul, thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. Let me say this to you guys. Let me say this to you. Um, after hearing all of these things, after hearing all of this that is going on and everything that is said, now, Agrippa has heard. Now, remember, Agrippa was the king. He comes in and there's great pomp and circumstances. And as I was telling you guys last week, you know, it's a big show thing. He comes in. The king is here. All of the high arcing uh, principal men of the city. Like I said, if the president came here to your, your city, wherever your city is at, I can assure you the mayor of your city is going to be there. The governor of your state is going to be there. Senators of your state is going to be there. City council leader, meetings, um, city council, council members are going to be there. Everybody is going to be there because an important person is in your city. Well, that's what it was when um, Agrippa came in. He came in with great pomp and circumstances. So all of these people was there. And you better believe that the chief priest and all of his cronies was there and everybody. And they're looking at Paul standing there. And again, now here is where the kicker come in. And again, Agrippa in verse number one in chapter 26, he says, then Agrippa said unto Paul, thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hands and answered for himself. So I can see this. Agrippa says, okay, in the midst of all this, Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. And when Paul stretched forth his hand, I can hear him saying, thank you. You know, that's something when someone else has to speak on your behalf. But let me tell you something. It is nothing like speaking for yourself. I mean, you know the passion points you have. Have you ever, um, have you ever, it's just certain things that touch you. There are certain songs that once you hear it, it bothers you when someone tries to sing that song if they're not singing it just like the artist. It's nothing that frustrates me more than anything. There's nothing that frustrates me more than anything than to um to hear somebody take a song. To hear somebody take a song and try to add it, it just you know they take off and they're running with them. You like what? They just sing the song. They try to put their little spin to it and make it. You're messing up the song. You know, when you hear something for a while, you like it that way. And that's just the human nature. Some of you guys are that way with your pastors. You're that way with, I, I'm used to hearing you. If I, you're not going to teach, I'm not going to listen. If you're not going to preach, I'm not, I'm not coming to church. You should be ready to hear the word of God. And God, you don't tell God who to use his word through. You don't tell him that, God. You should be open to hear the word of God. But we have a proclivity to learn or gravitate towards certain voices. It's just the truth of the matter is just certain voices irritate people. My voice may irritate people. You loud. You too loud. You know, and it, this irritates some people. But then my voice, some people really like to hear. It's comforting to them. It sounds, you know, a loud person to some people. You're loud to some people. It's commanding. I think I'm more commanding than loud. Okay, so nevertheless, what you're having here, and that's what he is saying here. So I'm, you get to speak. So Paul beckons us. He says, okay, thank you. Thank you. I get to speak for myself. Because when you speak for yourself, you know every emotional point that you want to make. You know when you want to hit the high or when you want to say, you know, want to be sarcastic. You know when you want to be challenging to a thing. A lawyer may just say, and you're telling me with everything that has been, everything that has been said, just use an example, everything has been said, you're saying you see no, um, nothing out of the ordinary. That's what a lawyer would say. 
But if it's you and you're defending your life, you're saying now, with all this stuff that has been said, you you actually telling me you don't see nothing out of the ordinary? See, you're making a point. And that's why it was and when um, King Agrippa says to Paul, you get to speak for yourself. I'm sure Paul was very, very happy for that. So after hearing that, it says, um, okay, so and that's what it was. And I'm trying to keep some notes because there's so much stuff that's going through my head. Y'all know that I would get squirrel brain on you in a minute. But that's what Paul wanted to do. He's saying, you know, being able to, um, you get to speak for yourself right now. I don't care what everybody else is saying. I've heard their stories. Now I want to hear yours. And that's very important because the more, like I said, when you hear both sides, you got a better way to balance. You have some common sense about yourself. And you know when something just does not line up. Okay. And so that's what he's saying right there. And I'm telling you guys, I'm, <laughs> I am doing my best not to freak out here. But um, it says, okay, um, Search, um, search, uh, stretch forth his hand and answer for himself. So Paul said, I'm more than willing to speak for me. I know what was there. I was there. I know what I said. I know what I did not say. I know what they were doing. And so we already have some history of because um, Festus has already sat down and spoke with Agrippa and told Agrippa as evidence back in verse number 20, <clears throat> 20 um, I think it's like 18, 19, we were saying, when I thought they was coming to tell me what was going on, they started going in left field and talking about something that did not even pertain to this right here. But this is something that I'm not sure about. So I'm defer to you, King Agrippa, and see what you say. So Agrippa, that's what he's thinking. He said, oh, Paul, now, okay, you speak for yourself. Let me hear what you are saying. Now I can know your mindset and what you are thinking. When you hear it come out of a person's mouth, you know their mindset and what they're thinking. He says, uh, he said, uh, verse number two, he says, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. So what he's saying is, there is Paul saying, I thank you. Thank you. I get to speak for myself. I get to speak for myself pertaining to all of these things that they are talking about with me. I get to speak for myself. And that is one thing when you don't speak, when you don't speak for someone else, but you're speaking when you don't get to speak um, for someone else, but you're speaking and no one is speaking for you. Guys, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Donna, would you please give me some kind of oil or something? Um, my, my ring in my hand, I feel like my hand is getting tight. Um, so this was... Um, and that's what he's saying. Um, what he's saying, you're speaking, speaking. Thank you, babe. Okay. Thank you, babe. Appreciate it. That's my wife. Thank God for it. Because I'm telling you, she she keeps the word of God balanced here because I'm telling you, I well. So this is what he's saying is um, um again, he says, I he says, I think I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before before the touching all the things whereof, whereof I am accused of the Jews. So he's saying, I get to address the issue. You don't have to wonder in any way, form, or fashion what I'm saying. You don't have to have hearsay as what I'm saying. I'm a first-person witness of me. So I, I, I'm going to say what I'm saying. Matter of fact, Paul, in essence, he's saying, before I take it back, I'm going to add some more to it. You ain't got to wonder if I said this or not. You don't have to wonder if I said this or not. I'm going to be able to um, deal with this matter myself. Okay? That's what he's saying. I'm going to deal with this matter myself. You don't have to wonder where I'm at or what I'm dealing with or where I'm, I'm going. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You can have all my money. Now, so he's saying, um, again, again, so that's what he's saying. He said, I can answer for myself, and that's what he did right here. He said, but he's thanking King Agrippa because everybody else is standing up and they're trying to answer for him. But he's saying, now I get to. I get to address this issue. I get to deal with this myself because I know exactly the point that I was trying to make. Remember, the argument was or the debate was, as Festus told you, it's about Jesus because Festus was saying Jesus was dead. 
But Paul affirmed that he is alive. And the Jewish leaders, they are angry and saying he's dead. Because if he is alive, then that means everything he said was true. And they're in a world of trouble. So Paul is beginning to speak to this issue himself. Now, not only this, and you need to learn this. Yo, somebody may try to set you up. They may try their best to set you up. But God will make the setup for you to be a home runner. So now Paul now get to spread the gospel, not only to King, uh, not only to Festus and not only to the religious leader, but to King Agrippa too. And see what they try to do, the devil, the word says what the devil meant for bad, God will mean it for good. God knows exactly where you're going to be and what you're going to be dealing with and where you're going to be going. So what God will say to you is if you just obey me and listen to me, I promise you I'm going to lead you through this. Yeah, they try to set you up, but who knows more than God? Who is it that knows more than God? And so God wants to address this issue and deal with it and go through it. And that's what he was saying. He says, listen at this in verse number three, especially because I know thee to be, a, to be expert on all customs, customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. How oh, this thing blew by? Please forgive me, saints. Please forgive me. You know, I do my best. My wife works with me a lot. We'll stand on task and stand focused. Seems like just irritated. And my ring seemed like, what you saw, my ring just seemed like it was swelling on my hand. And I was panicking because I wanted to get it off. I had that experience once in my life. And I was trying to get it off. And thank God, you know, my wife was here for me to be able to minister what needed to get it off. But nevertheless, it took a bit of my time. Just a few things that has gone on. Y'all can't see them, but a few things. But I pray that it did, did not in any way, form, or fashion take away from you and hear it. And if it did, please forgive me. And I ask you to go back and review the message again that you can hear what it is that God is saying to you. So we're going to pick up here next week in verse number three because Paul is beginning to address this issue with King Agrippa. King Agrippa know a few things. And so Paul wants to address that. We thank God so much for you. I really do, saints. I know that there has been a lot that you guys got going on today. Some of you have a day off and just really, really, really just wanted to relax. But I thank God for you that you took time to um, just sit and listen to the word of God with us today. So if you would go back and rehearse, um, we only got pretty much four verses done. But it was a lot impact into those four verses. I pray that the, the devil do not steal it from you, even with the distractions which even came today from the leader. So, if you would, go back and rehearse the message again. It may be able to grow in God's word. Father, we thank you and we bless you and we honor you for this time that we have had in your word. I pray, Lord God, that no distraction will keep the people from hearing what you have to say to them, for them, about them. Help us, Lord God, that we may take this word that we have read and able to apply it to our lives that we may be able to grow in your will, law, and way. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. I pray, Lord, that your word was not missed in any way, form, or fashion. But to those, Lord, that do not know you, I pray that they may be able to take thy word and apply it to their lives and may come to the knowledge of who you are and fall under the saving grace of Jesus the Christ. Thank you, Father, for keeping keeping us, Lord, and being able to speak the word to thy people. Thank you for those, Lord, that have taken time from their busy schedules to join us, that we may grow in your word. Doing this, Lord, we're careful to give your name, the praise, the honor, and the glory. For we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you are one out there, and you have not given your life to Christ to be your Lord and Savior, and you would like for him to be both Lord and Savior of your life, I want to walk you through God's plan of salvation. Now, before we move any further, I want to ask, is there someone that once knew Jesus to be their Lord and Savior, and you turned and you walked away? And you said, now, nah, I want to get it back in line with God's word. Listen, say, this is very important right here at this point. If you are a believer in Christ, you should be praying. There may be someone you would never in your life see or meet, but you get to, guys. You get, you get to pray for them and have a part of God leading them to eternal salvation. So you should be praying. And you should learn this, that when you have the opportunity to present Jesus, you know how to do this, saints. That this thing may be beneficial for kingdom, 
and for your life. Now, if you're either one of those people, you never knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you once knew him, you turned and you walked away, and now you would like to rededicate your life to Christ. If you're either one of those people, come and walk with me. Just repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this door that is set before me. I right now walk through this door by my own free will. I start with repentance. Forgive me, Lord, for the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. I ask you, Lord, if you will wash away the sins of my life, if you will cleanse me, Lord, I will serve you the rest of the days of my life. I right now, of my own free will, invite you, Jesus, into my life, that you may come in and sit on the throne of my heart to rule my life as both Lord and Savior. Oh, Father, thank you for this opportunity. I right now, of my own free will, confess Jesus as my Lord and my Savior and choose to kneel my knee to him and show all that he is King of kings and Lord of lords of my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. Let us know. We want to celebrate with you. Now, you may say, okay, what am I doing now that I've getting saved, gotten saved? Well, what you do is you get in a good Bible-believing church, sit down and listen to the word and grow. You may say, well, I'm not sure about that right now. I'm not sure about this church thing. Okay, stay here with us until God strengthens you enough to where you are clear with word that you are able to branch out and sit with fellowship with people to be able to grow. You may say, well, I like Firm Foundation. What do it take to become a member of Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry? Well, we ask you two questions. One, do you believe that the Bible is the true word of God? You say, yeah, well, I believe that. We say, okay, are you willing to obey then the rules and the regulations of this ministry so as long as they line up with the word of God? You may say, yeah, I'm willing to do that. Well, then we say, well, then welcome to Firm Foundation, a church that loves people right where they are and always want to push them to where God wants them to be. Remember, from the commandment to the promise is the process, and you're in the process, and we want to make sure we keep you on the uh, road of the process God have you for. You say, I want to come and visit you guys. I want to sit with the ministry and hug um, the members and shake hands. Where are you located? We're located at 1851 Highway 66 South in Kernersville, North Carolina. You can Google it and it will get you there, guys, right there to the front door where we're able to shake hands, give you a hug, and enjoy times that we have together. You may say, okay, then I want to support the ministry. How do I go about supporting the ministry? Well, you can go to that same um, our website right here, what you're on. There is a QR code where you are able to go on the QR code and you can give. Or you can send it snail mail by just putting it in the envelope, going to firmfoundationoutreach.org or, you know, right there in um, 1851 Highway 66 South in Kernersville, North Carolina. We assure you every dime will be used for the kingdom of God's purpose and no crooked or shady business. That's not what we do, saints. That's not what we do. Fear God. And love the people of God too much to have such foolishness going on. So if you're that person, love to see you. Um, any support you give, we thank God for you. And we promise you it will be used for the things of God. Guys, be blessed. We love you in Jesus' name. Look forward to seeing you right here on this page. Right here on this channel. Wednesday nights, 7 p.m. Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. We love you in Jesus' name. You be blessed.